Hello and welcome back, or if you're a first time viewer I guess, welcome to a Sew Machines UK tutorial video. Um, this is going to be a new series that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be on P Design 11 and this is going to be the first episode which is going to introduce you to all the basics and sort of get you started so when you first receive your sewing and embroidery machine or your software you can get started straight away in the software and have a good idea of sort of what everything does and where everything is. To start, when you open your software for the first time, you're going to be greeted with this menu. This menu is known as the wizard, and what it's going to do is get you quick started into whatever it is that you want to start doing straight off the bat. The top option here is going to be use template design. These template designs come baked in. As you can see here, um, they've got loads of different things for various different applications. If you've got a cap frame, they've even got ones for caps, jackets, bathrobes, kids clothings, towels, um, and these are very simple designs but they're just there so that you can get started immediately because when people get their embroidery machine for the first time they don't want to be waiting around or waiting to learn. Here at Sewing Machines UK we do offer free lessons to anyone who buys the software off of us but not everyone gets that luxury depending on where you buy it from. So I'm going to open one of these up so I'm going to select it and click next. Now that I've clicked next you can see here, the text elements here where it says tropical and sunset, you can edit here. So let's say we want to edit where it says tropical. Just click edit text, type in wherever it is that you want it to say. I'm just going to write test. Hit enter. And there you go, it's changed it. Test. It's that simple. On this screen, it also shows you all the information tells you the file name, the size, the amount of stitches, and the total amount of colors needed to complete the design. Then go ahead and click next. On this next screen, you can send it directly to a network machine. That's great for some people. Um, if you have your machine linked up to your Wi-Fi, then you can easily just send it straight over and stitch out immediately. If not, you're gonna have to click edit in design page. Now we have it opened up in the design page. You can edit any of the elements, like for example, at the top here, if you click text, you could change the font, you could change the color. And then you can go ahead and stitch it out by saving it to a memory stick using save as, or sending it to a USB media, which is basically the same thing. Right, the second option available is to create embroidery patterns using images. Using this setting, you can select an image. For example, let's take this rose, open it up, and then you can choose a way of converting that image into stitches, either cross stitch, photo stitch, auto punch, or design center as well. I'm going to cover all of these in another video as I feel like there's quite a lot to say about each one. But as you can see, it gives you a short description underneath of the process, a little preview of what the output will look like. And this can be really useful when you're starting out. The results of these aren't always perfect, but for things like photo stitch, for example, it's about as good as you can get converting a photo into stitches. If you want to be notified when this video comes out on all of these methods, then hit subscribe and the bell icon to stay notified of our uploads. The option beneath that is to set the hoop size and fabric. This is if you want to create a blank canvas for you to work on, on a specific size for the machine you're working on. If I click this option, it will bring up this design settings page. In this page you can choose what type of machine you've got, whether it's a flatbed or a cylinder arm. The flatbed's an example of which would be an F540 or 880E, something like that. Or a PR slash VR embroidery machine, which will be an example of the cylinder arm. When you select what machine type, it will change the available frames. The frames the machine comes with will also be available here, but if you've bought any extra frames, they should be available on here also. If, however, your hoop size isn't on here for whatever reason, say you're not using a brother machine, for example, you can use a custom size down below. 
On this page also, you're able to change the page color, which is this white canvas color. And you're able to change the background as well. The background's more of a personal preference thing, but the page color could be useful if you're embroidering onto a specific color of fabric. I'm gonna hit OK. Once you hit OK, it's gonna ask you what kind of fabric you're gonna be embroidering onto. This can be useful for beginners to embroidery in general, as when you select a fabric type, as you can see, it actually recommends what stabilizers to use and gives a short bit of information on how to identify these fabrics as well. I'm just gonna select default for this though. Now you have PE Design 11 open properly. On the left hand side of the machine, you're gonna have your sewing layers. When you add any element to the canvas, it will show up here. The top of the list will sew out first. So as you can see here, the black circle is going to sew out, then followed by the pink one. This sewing order can be checked by running a simulation at the bottom. It will show you a quick animation of how it is going to sew out, and that way you can determine whether you got your sewing orders right. Don't forget to hit the stop button afterwards to return back to the editing. On the right hand side we have our attributes. We have our text attributes which are useful for if you're editing a text element. And we have our sewing attributes which are used for all elements. As you can see here, I have this circle that I created selected. It shows me a lot of information about how the machine is going to sew it out and how the software is actually digitizing the shape in the first place. When you first open the software, it will be in beginner mode like this and it will give you a lot less options. Um, this can be useful for starting out, but as you continue to use the software more, you might want access to a lot more options. In which case, you're going to want to click to expert mode, which is located down at the bottom of the menu. When you click that, you can have a lot more options and a lot more granular control about how your machine is going to stitch it out. I'll go into these in more depth in a later video. In the panel next to that, you're going to have your colors. You can choose a color chart. They have a lot of brands of color chart here. The one that we use a lot here at Sewing Machines UK is Madeira Rayon. So I'm going to select that. And as you can see, it shows every shade and the color code associated with it. At the top, you have line and region. With these, you can choose the color of your line and region. <laughs> so, for example, if I wanted the black part, which is the region, to be a different color, I can go ahead and select that here. And then if I wanted the outline to be a different color, I could select line at the top left and then choose that here. It's gone back to the brother chart, so I'm going to select round again and then select a different outline color like so. The top menu is quite important as well. Under home is where you have a lot of your tools. Under image, you have a lot of your automatic tools and also the ability to add a background image as well. Under the view tab, you have solid view, which allows you to see everything in block colors, which is really useful for editing as it helps you sort of visualize where your blocks are. You have stitch view, which allows you to see the individual stitches. It can be useful because sometimes it really does come down to just moving individual stitches. You can see imperfections and remedy them a lot easier in this view. And then finally you have realistic. The realistic view tries to show you a sort of simulated look of the stitches and sort of give you an idea about how it's going to stitch out. It's not always 100% correct. Sometimes it can look a lot worse in realistic view than it will actually turn out when you stitch it out. If you tick the view thread trimming, then it will show you all of your trim stitches. This is only really useful at sort of advanced levels if you're trying to optimize. You want as little travel distance as possible. So this can be handy to keep your start and stop points sort of close to each other to minimize travel. The sewing order button here just removes the layers section. You sort of want the sewing order up at all times as it's really helpful to sort of inform you about what's going on and what layers are overlapping other layers. The stitch simulator is what I showed you earlier. It's at the bottom of the screen. It shows you a bar separated into the colors and sort of the quantity of each. And you're able to hit the play button to show that stitch simulation. The reference window can be quite useful if you're zooming in and doing a lot of close work as it will always show you the sort of zoomed out view and sort of your viewpoint 
in reference to the image. As you can see, it's showing me exactly what my viewpoint is. I can change that viewpoint in the reference window. I can move it to where I want to be editing. Um, this is only if you're doing some really close up work. It can be just a nice tool. Next, we have the grid settings. You can show a grid here. This can be useful for sort of figuring out sizes and lining things up. If you show it with axes, it's more like a sort of, well, I call it like a math book. This can be really useful though if you're trying to line things up on horizontals like more precisely you can change the size of it you can make everything snap to this grid which can be useful if you're doing something very very precise it's not useful for everything though so i wouldn't tend to keep it on you can turn the rulers off at the top and side of the screen and you can turn the guidelines off as well but i haven't placed any guidelines down so next tab we have is the scan and cut tab it's only really useful if you have a scan and cut machine. Um, you can link to your canvas workspace, import and export cutting patterns and stuff like that. Finally, we have the contextual tab. The contextual menu will show you any information about the thing that you currently have selected. For example, I have this shape selected, so it's showing me the outline stitch, which I can change here. So say so if I change that to a running stitch and the fill stitch, which I could change here. So let's go with say a decorative fill. There's obviously a lot more to it, but this is the basics. So I'm just going to keep it very basic. Finally, I'm going to show you some simple tools to get you started. I'm going to delete this, go into my view, turn off the axis. Right. So first thing to show you is text. There's a few different varieties of text. You have your large normal size, well, you have your larger slash normal size text here. You've got your small text, which is basically a single stitch in diameter. You have your monograms, which are sort of like artistically designed text, if you will. It's, it's in a sort of layout. Um, it's for initialing and stuff like that. And then you have your user mapped text which is sort of your very fancy text with all your flowers, etc. Um, I'm going to demonstrate right now with the normal text here. So as you can see, my contextual menu now says text at the top, whereas it did say shape when I had the shape selected. I'm going to type in test right here. Um, and as you can see on the right hand side, we now have text attributes selected. Test is now typed in, and as you can see, it's outlined. As soon as I hit enter, that's going to be digitized into stitches. I'm able to change the color up here, or on the side here. And I'm able to change what stitch is used right here. By default, it would be satin stitch, but you could want it fill stitched. You could want it program fill stitched, which is a more advanced technique. Um, I'm going to keep it satin for now. Underneath your text attributes, you have all of your text settings. So if you wanted it to transform around an object or for a badge, you have all these settings here. When you select any of these, the green handles that appear will allow you to edit this shape. So if I want to make the circle bigger because it's a larger curve, if I want to move the text around that shape and if I just want to make it bigger. The red circle will allow you to rotate your design. And then obviously the little black squares around the edge will just allow you to resize it as you normally would. At the top left, we have our font. You're able to select any font that you like, and you just click it to select it, and it will change to that font. The little number with the millimeters next to it is the minimum size that that font is able to go to while still being sort of supported. As you can see, there's 120 built in fonts into the software. The ones below this 120th 
will be your true type fonts. These fonts are fonts that are installed onto your computer and are not officially supported, but are very well supported by the software and they'll still work as I'll show you here. So you can simply download fonts from the internet, install them to your machine and you'll be able to use them in the software. On the right you also have loads of other font settings um, such as character spacing, kerning, um, alignment, um, these are all these are all typography options. If you have a specific font for say a brand or something that you're working with then they should supply you with all these sort of informations like the font, the spacing, etc. Below the font you have the size Say if I wanted 20 millimeter font, I'd select that, and that would be the new size of the font. Right, that is text in a nutshell. I'm going to delete that. Now I'm going to show you shapes. These shapes are all built in and supported. You're able to just click and drag like you would on Microsoft Word, for example. Any of these shapes. You have these built in shapes at the bottom. And then you have ways of creating your own shapes at the top, for example. You can either freehand draw it, or you can use a closed straight line to draw it, allowing you to create any sort of shapes you like. Double click to end, that will close it up for you. And then you have what is called manual punch. This can be really useful for outlining objects. It can be quite confusing to use at first. I feel like I should do a video on this itself so stay tuned for that but just as a quick overview you select two points, a third, a fourth to create your first block shape and then just continue in this sort of pattern. You can use this to create very complex shapes or even trace over um, an image that you had in the background, for example. You can also do the same with singular lines. So yeah, there's many more tools in there. I could go through them all, but I mean, they're quite self-explanatory and the easiest way to learn them is to just try them out. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this line. Finally, something else that you might find quite useful when you're starting off is on the right here. Um, if you click import, you have your design library. These are all built-in designs You've got animals, birds, floral, there's loads of built-in designs. Some of them are shared with the machines, some of them not. And it's quite simple, you just find a design that you like. Let's say floral for example, and then you literally just simply click and drag it into the frame. Place it and there you go. Um, re you can resize it, rotate it, make a little design with the text that we learned earlier, and transform it, change the size, and there you go, you've got a very simple little design. There are also other things that you can import here as well, like text, outline shapes, templates, like the templates we were looking at earlier, you can just drag those straight in as well, like so. It might be too big for your current frame, but you can just drag it down, there you go. Um, if you're ever too zoomed in like this, at the bottom right, 
you have your zoom settings you can just zoom out zoom in like plus and minus there at the bottom right um yeah there's a lot of good stuff in there there's tutorial pieces there's network sewing machines if you've got anything shared over the network um, I don't think I have, I don't think it'll actually find anything here. I'm just going to go back to the design library. Delete this. Finally, saving your image. Say if I have a design that I'm happy with. If I click save as, I can save it to a location. If I click this PC, I'll be able to see any USB devices that I have inserted to the PC and then just click those and hit save. Otherwise, if you wanted to send it directly to the machine, you can click the send button at the top and select your network machine. I don't currently have one online, but if you did, it would be available there. All right, thanks very much for watching this tutorial. I know there's a lot more to cover, but this was just supposed to be the basics. This is just to get you started. Um, if, you if you think there's anything I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'll check that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified for when the next episode comes out. And I'll uh, see you in the next one. <laughs>